Welcome to the Arizona Department of Education's video on the Arizona Science Standards versus the Next Generation Science Standards. This is part one of this two-part video series. This short video was designed to explain the similarities and the differences between the new Arizona Science Standards that were adopted in October of 2018 and the Next Generation Science Standards. Let's start with some basic background information of how the standards were actually developed. A committee of 110 educators and community members formed working groups to design the new Arizona Science Standards. To build the standards for Arizona, the committee used two research documents. Together, these documents form the backbone of the committee's work on the new science standards. Downloads of both documents are available online and I would encourage all educators to look through these documents as we move towards implementing the new standards. I am sure some of you are familiar with the Next Generation Science Standards, but Arizona is not an NGSS state, as we developed our own unique set of standards written by Arizona educators for Arizona students. Similar to the NGSS, the Arizona Science Standards were designed using the exact same research document called the Framework for K-12 Science Education. Where Arizona is different than NGSS, is that we used an additional document called Working with Big Ideas of Science Education to develop our standards. So we are a framework-based state, not an NGSS state. Now that we've reviewed the background information on how the standards were developed, let's begin our comparison of the two sets of standards by reviewing what is the same between the NGSS and the AZSS. Since both the NGSS and the Arizona Science Standards use the framework for K-12 science education to develop the standards, they have a few components in common. Both the NGSS and AZSS use what we call three-dimensional learning. The framework has individual chapters dedicated to each of the dimensions of science instruction. Chapter 3 in the framework describes the science and engineering practices. Chapter 4 describes the cross-cutting concepts and chapters five, six, and seven describe the disciplinary core ideas in physical, life, and earth and space sciences. If you want to deepen your understanding of the new science standards, you need to become familiar with the framework, not read it from cover to cover, but become familiar with the aspects of three-dimensional science instruction. Let's just do a quick overview of three-dimensional science instruction to ensure you have a basic working knowledge of the three dimensions before we begin to compare the two sets of standards more deeply. The first dimension is the science and engineering practices that describe behaviors that scientists engage in as they investigate and build models and theories about the natural world. And the key set of engineering practices that engineers use as they design and build models and systems. The framework uses the term practices instead of a term like skills to emphasize that engaging in scientific explanation requires not only skill, but also knowledge that is specific to each practice. There are eight science and engineering practices. One example is students are asked to develop and use models. The students use models to help develop explanations about natural phenomena. Models make it possible to go beyond what can be observed and enable the students to make predictions to test hypothetical explanations. The second dimension is the cross-cutting concepts, and they are taught in the context of instruction within the core ideas and not in isolation. There are seven cross-cutting concepts, and they represent a way for students to think about phenomena. For example, Middle school students may use the cross-cutting concept of patterns to look for and recognize patterns on both the micro and macroscopic levels. And high school students understand that patterns vary in a system depending on the scale at which the system is studied. In engineering, patterns of system failures may lead to design improvements. Assisting children with pattern recognition facilitates learning, causing the brain to search for meaning in real world phenomena. In the middle of this image, we have the third dimension, the core ideas. Disciplinary core ideas have the power to focus K-12 science curriculum, instruction, and assessments on the most important aspects of science. These are physical sciences, earth and space sciences, life sciences, and using science and engineering in the everyday world. The core ideas are used to build a coherent progression of learning for students from kindergarten to 12th grade. Both the Next Generation Science Standards and the Arizona Science Standards incorporate these three dimensions.
In addition to the three dimensions of science instruction, both sets of standards use phenomena to drive instruction. But what exactly is phenomena? On page two of our standards document, phenomena is described as an observable event that can be explained or explored using scientific practices, ideas, and concepts, which are the three dimensions. Both sets of standards incorporate using phenomena, whether it's through asking students to observe science phenomena, to wonder about phenomena, or to seek explanations for the causes of phenomena. In both sets of standards, phenomena help students with sense-making in science. Let's review what we have learned so far about the similarities between the two sets of standards. First, both sets of standards were designed using the research document called the K-12 Framework for Science Education, which means both sets of standards include three-dimensional instruction. Both sets of standards use the science and engineering practices, the cross-cutting concepts, and both are based on engaging students with phenomena, or observable events that happen in the real world. Another similarity between the two sets of standards is the use of this helpful supplemental document. This document was created by ACHIEVE and provided with permission for use with the new Arizona Science Standards. This is called the K-12 Cross-Cutting Concepts Progression Matrix of Elements and describes in depth how students in each grade band engage with and use the cross-cutting concepts to think about phenomena. Since this is a progression, the elements increase in sophistication over time as students progress from kindergarten to 12th grade. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say I'm a fifth grade educator and I have included the cross-cutting concept of patterns in my instructional sequence. As I plan my lesson, I take out this tool and I use it to really help me think through what the student should be doing in relation to patterns. I look at each bullet point or element and consider what that might look like in the lesson. Another great way to use this tool is to use it for differentiation. If I am a fifth grade teacher and I have students that can easily engage in the elements laid out in the three five grade band, I may want to look ahead in the progression to help support those students. Or if a student needs more support and is struggling, I may look at the element in the previous grade band to support the needs of that student. Another great use of this tool is to think about each element as an objective. I can simply take the element or bullet point and transform it into an objective statement and use this while planning an instructional sequence. There is also a progression document for the science and engineering practices and both sets of standards use this document as a supplemental tool to describe ways that students in each grade band can engage with the science and engineering practices. Similar to the tool on the previous slide, this document describes the progression from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade and describes what the students should be able to do in relation to the science and engineering practices. And similar to the cross-cutting concepts progression, this tool can be used to help students and differentiate instruction, as well as help you plan for instruction. Now that we have discussed the similarities between the two sets of standards, let's examine the differences. While both sets of standards incorporate the three dimensions of science instruction, there are some differences. Both the Arizona Science Standards and the Next Generation Science Standards use the eight science and engineering practices and the seven cross-cutting concepts. However, a major difference between the two sets of standards is in the development of the core ideas or content that describes what students need to know. Both sets of standards have core ideas, but Arizona has a unique set of core ideas that differ slightly from those laid out in the next generation science standards. We will further explore this distinction in the next slide. A main difference between the next generation science standards and the Arizona science standards is the core ideas. Understanding this difference is very important when searching for resources. The first way the two sets of standards differ is in the name of the core ideas. NGSS refers to the core ideas as disciplinary core ideas, and in Arizona, we call these the core ideas of knowing science and the core ideas of using science. Both sets of standards have 13 core ideas, but they are not written or described in the same way. So let's take a closer look to see what aspects are similar and what is different. In the NGSS, Disciplinary core ideas are grouped in four domains, the physical sciences, 
life sciences, earth and space sciences, and engineering technology and applications of science. In the Arizona Science Standards, core ideas are also grouped into four domains, but the domain names are slightly different. Both sets of standards include the domains of physical, life, and earth and space science. However, the new Arizona Science Standards do not have the domain of engineering technology and the application of science. In Arizona, this domain, which is related to the nature of science and the engineering design process, is included in what we call the core ideas of using science. The three core ideas for using science are referred to as U1, U2, and U3, connect scientific principles, theories, and models, engineering and technological applications, and societal implications to the content knowledge to support that understanding. Another major difference is in the actual language written in each core idea. Let's quickly look at a side-by-side -side comparison. Here is the physical science core ideas. Notice that both sets of standards have four core ideas, but they do not have the same language or content for each core idea. Now let's look at life science. Although both sets of standards have four core ideas, the content that exists within each core idea is different. In the Earth and Space core ideas, we see that NGSS has three core ideas and Arizona standards have two core ideas. And finally, the core ideas related to engineering and applications of science are very different between the two standards. Before we move on, I just wanted to remind you that the reason the two sets of standards have different core ideas is because the NGSS were designed from only the research provided in a framework for K-12 science education. While Arizona also used this framework to develop our standards, our committee also used an additional research document called Working with Big Ideas of Science Education to develop our standards. So now that you have a deeper understanding of the differences between the core ideas, let's review Arizona's unique approach to three-dimensional instruction. This document is called the Arizona Science Standards Framework Snapshot, and it is a very useful tool to help educators understand how the three dimensions work together. The first dimension, or science and engineering practices, describe what the students are doing. The second dimension, or cross-cutting concepts, describes the lens through which students can think about phenomena. The third dimension includes both the core ideas of knowing science and the core ideas of using science. This document is available for download on the Arizona Department of Education website. Let's summarize what we have discussed so far. We will start by reviewing what characteristics the two sets of standards have in common. First, both were designed using the research document called the K-12 Framework for Science Education, which means both sets of standards include three-dimensional instruction, the science and engineering practices, and the cross-cutting concepts. And both are based on engaging students with phenomena, which are observable events that happen in the real world. What is different between the two sets of standards is that the Arizona Science Standards refers to science content as the core ideas, whereas NGSS refers to the core ideas as disciplinary core ideas. Another difference is that the Arizona Science Standards also incorporates research from an additional document called Working with Big Ideas of Science Education, and therefore means the core ideas in both sets of standards are not an exact match. One more component that is different between the two sets of standards is the actual location of the science and engineering practices in the core ideas, which vary by grade level. For example, a, a core idea may be in third grade in the NGSS, but you might find it in fifth grade in the Arizona Science Standards. If you would like to learn more about how to compare the standards, please watch part two of this video series. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and contact Rebecca Gorelli, the K-12 Science and STEM Specialist for the Arizona Department of Education. Thanks so much.